Welcome to Boomerang TV on our first episode of uh, Women Empowerment Program. And today joining us is going to be a phenomenal young South Sudanese woman who is a medical doctor as well as the team's, uh, the national basketball team doctor. Uh, she is currently, she's actually, uh, this is not, she's professionally a medical doctor and currently she's pursuing her uh, master's degree in sports science. So ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Dr. Julia Kuch. Welcome to Boomerang TV, Dr. Julia. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Susie. We would want to just get to know uh, more about you today in regards to the kind of work that you've done, the kind of work you're doing, and uh, hopefully what, you know, what we will see from you in the coming years. So um, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Dr. Julia Kuch? Um, I am a medical doctor by profession. Uh, I'm also um, trying to, um, I'm trying to add to my knowledge and my skills by, uh, by pursuing a master's in sports science. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am the national team's doctor for both the men and the women uh, national team basketball. And uh, currently I am the founder and CEO of Moya IV. Uh, this is uh, a startup company that, uh, well, it's innovative. Uh, it's a health innovative and wellness company dealing mm -hmm. uh, in electrolytes, basically to improve the hydration of the South Sudanese people and create awareness on what healthy hydration is. You said you're a sports scientist. What, uh, who exactly is a sports scientist or what does a sports scientist do for some of us that have no idea what that is? Um, this is, uh, well, an individual. In my case, I, I am a medical doctor by profession. So it kind of puts me in between a sports doctor. When I say sports doctor, I have the medical part and now I'm acquiring the science part. Um, a sports scientist is someone who helps athletes maximize their performance, you know, whether it's uh, through nutrition or nutritional advice or whether um, learning, how to, uh, learning how to train yourself in the gym and uh, specific, the, these specific body um, exercises or conditions that you can mm -hmm. do to help you uh, be better at what you do. Like for example, if you're a basketballer, a sports scientist can help you uh, maximize your jumping skills, your vertical skills, you know, when you should do it and also um, advise you on what you should eat um, before games, during games and all of that. So all these are things that encompass the science part of it. Um, a sports doctor, however, if you know, if you're doing sports medicine, this is someone that you go see when you have an injury, you know, when you have an injury. Um, so they probably see you prescribe uh, medication and then you'll be on your way out, right? But however these days, um, it's better if uh, you are sports, if you do sports medicine and do science together because mm -hmm. now you're all evolved into one, you know, you're yeah. basically the heaven for the athlete. And at what point in time did you decide you wanted to venture into sports science? Um, first of all, I've always been an, an athlete. And I uh, and I was not really interested in sports um, sports medicine like that. But I was doing orthopedics, which is along the line of sports medicine, right? Because you're dealing with bones and injuries and, uh, and joints and all that stuff. But when I got the call from the national team, from the federation, to to go with them uh, the first time in uh, 2020, mm. I definitely saw um, an opportunity, a career that does not have. Um, people in it because when I went there I didn't have a mentor I literally had to um, uh, do a lot of uh, side studying I had to take a lot of courses just because I wanted to to do the job because there was no one to do the job even yeah. though we needed someone in the national team you know because I started with the federation by the way for those watching she is going to be the first sports scientist in South Sudan this is actually a very big win for women you know, considering because if you look around, many of our South Sudanese women don't, most of them don't get involved in sports, you know, they soft life. But uh, <laughs> uh, how, you know, what challenges do you think you might face or you are facing currently as a sports scientist and how do you maneuver around these challenges? Well, the, 
the first and the biggest challenge that I had was definitely being the only woman in the room walking in, you know, uh, even uh, the tournaments, especially during COVID, mm -hmm. where we were like, when the hotel bubble and it's just all men, there's like eight teams, we're talking about 10 teams and I'm the only one running up and down. I have to like be also like one of the guys, you know, I have yeah. to change my lingo. I have to change the way I dress and just like, it's like running with the boys, you know, you see, blending in. you cannot bring, you know, like the whole um, feminine energy in the beginning. Because for me, um, it was all about to prove my work. And then later on, I could I could have all this feminine energy around me. But as long as they know that they could trust anything that I say, you know, so but with time um, now I get immense respect from the players. Um, and um, so the challenges are just coming from, you know, um, support, you know, because the federation, federation we need support uh, yeah. from the government because it's not just the national team only. It's the people back home that also need this type of services. Um, earlier, you spoke about uh, recently starting your own company mm -hmm. uh, called Moya IV. Right. Uh, just tell us, uh, you know, because you mentioned it briefly, but just tell us about this company, the starting process, uh, the products and services that you're offering. Yes, so uh, Moya IV, like I told you before, uh, this is a startup company. It's a South Sudanese, 100% South Sudanese company. And uh, it's uh, dealing in the distribution of electrolytes. Now, I will have to tell you what electrolytes are before I can even go for it. Mm -hmm. Electrolytes, in simple words, these are mineral salts that uh, when you add to your water and you take, they, um, they increase uh, your hydration status. Basically, uh, it is like uh, an express delivery system of water and nutrients in the body right um so that's why we um we came up with um uh, with the name moya iv uh basically moya is water in arabic yeah. and iv in uh, medicine iv is intravenous you know so it's the concept of turning the drip or the intravenous uh, fluid that's given to you when you're dehydrated mm -hmm. we're turning that into a powder that you can put in your drinking water and drink like water. Yeah. Uh, how did you, you know, like what ingredients did you use uh, for this uh, Moyo IV? What are the ingredients that were put together? And how beneficial are they to our bodies? Okay. The list is long, but not long enough for you to know uh, what uh, is in there. And we try, no, we try. One of our values in the company is transparency. We want our consumers to know what it is that they're taking yeah. and uh, what and what can they tell us about it, you know, because we accept all feedback and welcome. Um, but we do have certain specific ingredients that uh, are the efficacy ingredient to give us the results that we want, right? Like I, um, I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, potassium, the sodium, the dextrose. Mm -hmm. Now we have also incorporated five essential vitamins, right? Five essential vitamins to also boost your immune while keeping you hydrated, right? And we do put all this information on our packaging at the back. You know, we try to uh, be as informative as much as possible as we can because we always, um, we know that uh, this is a new product in the market this is a new product in the country so before people can just try it you know they will want to ask questions about it there's a lot of questions they do get asked about oh, yeah. it so we try we don't try we actually put everything out there on our website on our website actually we have broken down all the ingredients one by one and uh, how can people get access to these products uh, currently, right now, um, we we do a delivery. I have an amazing team uh, who are very efficient. You know, we have uh, our phone numbers on our socials and our website. You can find it. We also have physical locations where you can walk in and buy it. Uh, mm -hmm. One is Phoenicia Supermarket. They have taken in our products, uh, which is I think is very good for us. Uh, we also have Lucky Supermarket on High Cinema. Um, uh, we also have New Kush Pharmacy along Kololo Road and okay. also Yaya Supermarket uh, next to American Embassy. Uh, with time, we're going to have more IV everywhere accessible for everyone. And Next. as we're winding up with uh, our show, would do you mind showing us, you know, how uh, 
these products work and Certainly. you know how to prepare them. Certainly. Yeah. Now before we even go into like how to put the product, um, always make it a habit to read what you're taking, you know, and we have put all the information that you need to know about electrolytes or when can you use it, the signs and symptoms of dehydration, we have included all of that, including a recycle me symbol. So do recycle, um, you know, so that we can keep our environment uh, clean and, you know, for sustainable living yeah right so let's get into it this is the the hydration booster it's so easy to open it um there you go and inside of these are 24 sachets they do come like this they, it comes in a sachet um now like i said try to read the information because someone is going to ask you how much water can i put in uh, mm -hmm. It's written right there, add to 500 ml of water. Now, most of our water bottles here are 600 ml. Doesn't mean that you cannot use that. You know, you can just drink a sip out of it or you can just put it in the 600. As long as it is not less than the, the, than the amount of water written for you to put the whole content. Does that make sense? If maybe yeah. it's a 200 ml glass, then I have to do the math. Maybe I don't have to put all 15 all grams, yeah. just have to put a little bit, right? Okay. So, um, on the on the sachet is a tear line so you can just follow the tear line and you just make it easy for you you know you don't have to buy it you don't have to fidget with it so you just tear it there you go have to say shaky shaky when you shake <laughs> shaky shaky <laughs> yeah, okay so and then please do the honors it has um it's it's a bit sweet right it's a bit sweet yes yeah. that's the dextrose in it that's the dextrose and then you will also feel a little bit of saltiness yeah yes that's the sodium now, if you do not have electrolytes, someone can be like, Jules, how, um, doctor, how can I hydrate and I am not able to afford electrolytes? It's easy. You can add a pinch of salt into your drinking water and that you are better than someone who is drinking plain water alone because we have to remember drinking plain water alone does not hydrate you. Again, the reason why um, I, I decided to bring uh, Moya IV is not simply because just only the athletes. South Sudan is hot. It's a hot country, True. you know, and our nutritional status does not allow us to fully um, uh, reach our performance levels, whether mm -hmm. it's playing sports or you are out con doing construction or whether you're doing policing or in the army. We basically are uh, chronically dehydrated as a country and the statistics it's not good, you know. Yeah. So uh, Moya IV, you know, someone can ask, is it only athletes that take Moya IV? No, Moya IV can be taken by uh, anyone leading an active life. Now, um, it is better to know who can take Moya IV and who cannot take Moya IV because this is very informative. Now, pregnant women, I'll start mm -hmm. with my pregnant women. Um, we do not allow you to drink the energy booster because it contains caffeine right uh it contains caffeine however for the hydration booster uh for the women that uh, experience morning sickness or severe morning sickness you are losing electrolytes because you are vomiting you know and you're not eating so we encourage you to actually drink um hydration booster because if you do go to the hospital they're going to put you on a drip yeah and my iv is here to solve the problem of needles and all that pricking you know so we do encourage you to take the hydration booster uh you know as uh we have seen there's so much so many dreams so much vision right here with moya iv and your sports science you know course um what's next for dr julia in five years ten years to come oh five years you will definitely uh, see a sports clinic by Dr. Juice because a sports clinic where athletes can come 
and they can be seen by um, whether it's a um, sports doctor, I mean, a sports uh, uh, scientist, or a trainer, or a physiotherapist, or a nutritionist. This is what the goal is. This is what the future is: is to build a sports um, medicine empire or clinic, you know, or something whereby athletes, because. A sports injury is not an illness. You have no business being um, in the hospital if you have uh, a knee issue, you know what I mean? So in five to ten years right now, not maybe, hopefully God praying it will be one or two sports clinic here and there, but definitely to elevate sports health in South Sudan. Uh, is there something you'd like to perhaps a piece of advice that you'd like to give to the audience in regards to their health uh, coming from a professional, you know, point of view as a doctor? Right. Um, hydration has direct impact on your health. If you're optimally or if you're well hydrated, you have a better chance of fighting your illness. You have a better chance of surviving. You basically have a better chance of having a better um, mental health and uh, you can make decisions and you can live long, right? It's just the same way if you're dehydrated. We see this in the hospital a lot. A lot of people, actually 90% of people that require major surgeries always need blood transfusion. Before you even see a doctor, they will always put you on a drip because we just, it's the um, unspoken truth, you know, and we go with the statistics that 98% of South Sudanese are dehydrated, mm -hmm. you know. So um, once you are hydrating yourself, even before you do go to the hospital, you are increasing your wellness. And this is why we like to say uh, Moy IV is a wellness company, it's a wellness and health because we embody everything to do um, uh, with, the, with the human health even though Moya IV is not a drug, it's not medicine, it is a supplement, you know. It should not replace your regular drinking water, you should just add it into your diet, into your nutrition to help you um, just go about your day, because constant headaches and fatigue is not normal. True, true. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, you know, joining us today and uh, enlightening us on what, you know, about dehydration and hydration and i definitely know right now i'm going to keep hydrated i'm going to keep hydrating and like you heard from her normal water does not do the hydration trick for you yeah but also my iv should not replace your regular drinking water no, got that got that uh thank you so much everyone out there that has been watching we hope you enjoyed this session and learned a few things about your health about my iv and about dr julia join us on our next episode my name is Susie Anuat. bye for now